Joe Biden has pulled out of the U.S. presidential race, a turning point in the race for the White House. As many would say, this, this is just a matter of time. After the debate fiasco last month, his uneven appearances, public appearances, and also growing outrage within the Democrats as well. Top Democrats had called for this, and now Joe Biden finally uh, pulling out of the presidential race. Vishal Vivek continues to be with us. He tracks uh, foreign policy and uh, uh, the U.S. politics very, very closely. Uh, Vishal, so as we were discussing earlier as well, uh, this has in a sense strengthened Trump's campaign as well um, ahead of that crucial November election. But what about the, uh, the Democrats? While, of course, they look for a replacement candidate, um, there was in a sense a lot of concerns around Joe Biden as well. As we were discussing earlier, uh, many thought that he was just too old after those series of faux pas and his fumbling and mumbling. Uh, so in a sense, could it... Uh, even marginally strengthen uh, the campaign for the Democrats as well? Yeah, that is also another interesting angle that you're talking about. Uh, Biden was quite unpopular. A uh, lot of young voters, especially, uh, which had voted for the Democratic Party last time, they were turning away from the party this time because of Joe Biden, uh, because uh, they thought that he's too old and too, you know, he's not competent enough to even uh, understand the language uh, sometimes. So th that's the notion that was going around on social media uh, in the U.S. particularly. So uh, the young voters were stepping away from the Democratic Party, mostly because of Joe Biden, and also in the battleground states, which are the key states in the U.S. as far as the U.S. elections are concerned. Even in those states, he was uh, uh, quite down from the, you know, uh, uh, the top-notch uh, candidate that is Trump. Uh, so all these factors, you know, com combined to make him, you know, an, an, a not really a great uh, candidate. So now that uh, the ball will be in Kamala Harris's court, most likely Please because... Speak. Uh, uh, I can Biden. see this tweet as well. Uh, he has uh, posted on his social yeah. media platform X. He says, uh, you know, addressing uh, uh, Democrats, he says, my fellow Democrats have decided not to accept the nomination and to focus all my energies and my duties as president for the remainder of the term. My very first decision as a party nominee in 2020 was to pick Kamala Harris as my vice president and it's been the best decision I've made. Today I want to offer my full support and endorsement for Kamala Harris to be the nominee of our party this year. Democrats, it's time to come together and beat Trump. Let's do this. So of course, Vishal, that is uh, you know, a big statement there coming from Joe Biden. He yeah. has posted that picture as well with Kamala Harris endorsing Kamala Harris as yeah. his successor. So that's an important development too. Of course. So uh, now he's passing the baton to Kamala Harris, who is the vice president right now. And this will be particularly interesting for Indian viewers because she's of Indian origin. Uh, and also the fact that she's already a vice president. She is a popular leader, but she seems to be not that popular. Uh, it will be sort of a pickle for the Democratic Party to choose someone else right now because uh, the next big, big candidate is just Kam Kamala Harris. There's no other candidate who is you know, who has this countrywide appeal. So this is sort of a pickle for the Democratic Party and uh, it will be tough for the Democratic Party to, you know, uh, pit Kamala Harris against Trump because Trump, as we've been reporting that, he's already leading in the race. And now that Biden is out of the race to bring in someone new uh, who is who doesn't have that kind of an experience, it will be quite uh, tough because... Uh, Trump is an ex-U.S. president. He has the experience of the White House. He has the experience of, you know, uh, mobilizing millions of people, thousands of people. Uh, and in the wake of the assassination bid, in the wake of the RNC, uh, epic RNC speech that he gave, he already has, you know, this pull on the crowd of the U.S. So it will be quite difficult for Kamala Harris to, you know, go against Trump. That's right, Vishal. And as you said, it would be of particular interest for Indian viewers as well, given the fact that Kamala Harris uh, could perhaps be uh, the official candidate of the Democrats. But how do you see this playing out? Will she be able to garner support of the Democrats? Because as you were also reporting earlier, she's not particularly popular herself. And, you know, will she be able to take on somebody, uh, somebody like Trump? Uh, how do you see that playing out? 
So Indian American politicians have been rising up in the party, particularly in the Democratic Party. Uh, also in the Republican Party, there are quite a few Indian American leaders who are coming up, such as Vivek Ramaswamy, who was also himself a uh, presidential uh, candidate in the running. He, he was not nominated, uh, but uh, yeah, he was one of the names uh, that, you know, uh, gained a lot of traction because of his social media pull. So there are a lot of Indian American names uh, in the whole of US, uh, in, particularly in politics. So uh, it will be interesting to see uh, if all of these people can rally together and you know, uh, sort of uh, this will this will have to be sort of a really new kind of a campaign because this will be the first time if Kamala Harris goes on to uh, become the official candidate. This will be the first time an, an Indian origin presidential candidate yes. will be there. So it, it, it will be a huge moment for Indian Americans and Indians also. So uh, all of that will have to be seen because the polls on Kamala Harris will be released in a few days. Uh, what are the expectations? How, what are the voters feeling about her as the presidential candidate? There are various polls in the US, AP and NORC poll, uh, Reuters Ipsos poll. So mm. what these polls say, that will also determine this race to the White House, which is already almost towards the finish line. Absolutely. These are the last stages of the campaign. But, you know, you talked about, uh, you know, the, the, the sort of campaign playing out between uh, the Republicans and uh, Kamala Harris, if she indeed is chosen as the official candidate uh, of the Democrats. But what about the sentiment within the party? Do you see her? Do you see top Democrats actually backing her as the official candidate? Within the party, she has the weight. Uh, she she pulls a lot of weight. Uh, she has a lot of support. Of course, she is the vice president. Uh, so, of course, uh, she does enjoy support of a lot of party members. Uh, but there are other young leaders that are also, you know, in the running, such as I've been mentioning Gavin Newsom of California. He's the governor there. He is looked at as, you know, someone who is the future uh, U.S. president. So, uh, will the party go for Gavin Newsom now? Uh, the fact that Kamala Harris is not that popular in the US, that is also another question. Will the party go for a third candidate? All of that will have to be discussed, discussed in the next, you know, probably two, three weeks because on August uh, 19th, the Democratic National Convention starts. And by the end of the week, they'll have to choose the candidate. And there was also... Uh, another report saying that uh, they will have to choose, the, uh, they'll probably plan to choose a candidate during the first week of August. So there's, there's only a couple of weeks time to, you know, decide to zero in on a candidate. So it's a really small amount of time to, you know, decide such a monumentous thing. So it's a uphill task for Democratic Party right now, while the Republican Party enjoys the success of the RNC. Absolutely. And, you know, it's interesting that you, you know, it's going to be interesting few days uh, ahead in, in, in American politics. But, you know, uh, it's, it was also very interesting how New York Times reported that uh, the Republicans are already preparing an attack plan as if Kamala Harris is indeed uh, chosen as uh, the official candidate of the Democrats. So, you know, the Republicans already seem to have an edge in that sense as far as the campaign is concerned. That is true. Uh, so even uh, Trump had been talking about Kamala Harris, even uh, as far as I can recall, even during the Republican National Convention speech, he mentioned Kamala Harris's name uh, uh, and said that she could be a, hinted that she could be a way better candidate than Biden. Uh, so he already had in mind that Kamala Harris could be, you know, in the running, could be against him. So there will obviously be plans. Uh, Republican Party, uh, you know, uh, it's a, it's a it's a grand old party of the U.S. It's it's the foundation party of the U.S. So they will have a lot of plans. And Trump, being at the helm of affairs, uh, being a businessman, a successful one, uh, so there will be a lot of plans to counter Kamala Harris for sure.